What's up guys, Lucas here, and today I'm going to be talking about the Milwaukee Bucks 2020-2021 NBA offseason. So a quick recap of their 2019-20 season, they finished first in the East, and they had the best record in the league. Their best player, Giannis Antetokounmpo, was voted as an MVP for the second straight season. And once they reached the playoffs, they ended up losing in the second round to the Miami Heat. This was the second straight season they finished uh, they lost before they should have. They lost to the Toronto Raptors the year before that, and both years they were the one seed and the finals favorite going in. And during this offseason, at the very beginning, before offseason actually started, uh, they finalized a sign-and-trade with Bogdan Bogdanovic from the Kings. And because the uh, sign-and-trade was finalized too early, he the f- trade fell through and he ended up signing with the Atlanta Hawks for more money. So yeah, they had... Uh, The 2019 season was disappointing, and they definitely had to make the moves that they made this offseason to keep Giannis happy, and just because it it was proven that core didn't work. They didn't have enough shot making on the team. The way they played is way too predictable, and they weren't adaptable. So, yeah, looking at some of the players they lost in free agency, they lost Wesley Matthews. That was really their only big loss this offseason. He signed with the Los Angeles Lakers. He will be missed because of his ability to shoot and uh, his defensive abilities, and we'll get to that later. But yeah, the defense that he brought was very helpful. Mostly the defense will be missed. The shooting, they were able to replace him with other guys in free agency, but the defense he brings definitely hurts. Uh, Acquired by trade, they got Drew Holiday from the uh, New Orleans Pelicans. This was their big signing or their big trade of the offseason they traded eric bledsoe and george hill for him and three first round picks and i think two pick swaps so it was definitely a big trade by them he drew definitely uh it was a high asking price is what i'm trying to say because they needed to make this move they had to get the roster better around Giannis so that he would sign his super max and they did that with drew i in a vacuum drew's not worth the return that they had to give up for him But it's similar to signing Paul George, where you know if you make this trade, you get Kawhi. So they knew if they make this trade, they most likely get Giannis. Uh, Yeah. And then draft picks, they didn't have any notable ones. They had Jordan Nuwara. He was drafted in the second round, but I don't know much about him. Uh, Free agents, they signed DJ Augustine. Uh, He was with the Magic last season. He'll probably play the backup point guard role. He's a good shooter, good ball handler, good offensive player, but defensively, he's very bad. He's only 5'11". He's one of the worst defensive players in the league. Uh, He tries in that end, but just physically, he's too small for a lot of people. Uh, Another one, Brian Forbes, very similar. Not as much of a ball handler, but a better shooter. He was with the Spurs, but once again, one of the worst defenders in the league. Very small for his size. Very small for his position, I mean. He plays shooting guard, and I believe he's only 6'2", maybe 6'3". Yeah, he's definitely not good defensively but he's a good shooter uh bobby portis from new york he was signed on a two-year uh, deal he is a i like this signing for them because he's a shot he's a stretch four stretch five kind of guy and i think he could fit next to Giannis well defensively with a lot of the guys that we're talking about uh he's not as good but offensively he can bring a lot he's pretty skilled on that end and yes, yeah, staying on this team, they have Dante DiVincenzo, who was almost traded for uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich, which I'm sure that's a weird dynamic now that he knows he was traded and has to come back on, come back and play for this team. But he showed a lot of good signs last year. He was a good scorer, uh, decent defender. Uh, I haven't, I heard that he wasn't that good of a defender from what I watched. He seemed okay, but I'd have to look at his defensive metrics to see. Uh, but offensively, he's a uh, inconsistent shooter but he's a good ball handler and good at attacking the basket and attacking on closeouts uh brooke lopez who was who's like the center point of their defense weirdly uh he's really he was really good for them not as much of a shooter last year he got that nickname splash mountain a few years ago and didn't really fit he shot about like 30 percent from three this year so he's still like he you can't leave him open out there but he's not what a lot of people think he is some people think he's like a shooting guard in a seven foot body he's his most value is on defense he's a really good rim protector and just fits well in the defensive scheme they have and uh chris middleton the second star on this team he had his uh, best season i'd say last year he was really good for them he's an all-star second straight year of being an all-star he averaged 20 
on 50, basically 50, 40, 90. I think he missed it by a little bit, but it was really close. He had a really efficient scoring season, but I still think he's a little out, uh, like miscast as like the second star on this team, on a championship caliber team. I just don't think he's good enough to be the second guy, but now with Drew, I think they can kind of, like neither of them are good enough to be the second guy on a championship team, but having both of them as your two, three, I think elevates that. So they have a good three man group now with Giannis, Chris Middleton and Drew. And, you know, Chris is very good defensively, very good shooter, uh, good at creating or good at spot up shooting, decent at creating his own shot. He was kind of exposed when Giannis went out this playoffs uh, when he missed that one game. And they ended up winning that game, but he definitely shows that like he's not meant to be a one and he's not great at creating his own shots and he's not great for creating for others either. Uh, But yeah, next to Giannis, I do like him as a scorer and defender. And then of course the star of this team, Giannis Antetokounmpo, he signed a five year max for about 228 million, I believe. Uh, This just got signed yesterday. That's why I'm doing the bucks. I decided on them. Uh, Yeah, I mean, that's that was the biggest thing of this whole season like if he didn't sign during this offseason then that would have been the narrative the whole year like whether is he whether he's going to sign with them or test free agency and as long as you have Giannis on your team it really doesn't matter who you have other than that I I don't think you're a championship championship team with just Giannis but I think you're in that conversation every year as long as you have him and yeah it just gives them uh they are championship contender for five years now Uh, for the next five seasons they're going to be in the mix as long as they can put a good team around him. And I think this is a good team around Giannis. Uh, but yeah, Giannis, he, he's starting to still trying to shoot more. And I think that's what people don't understand. A lot of people are saying, oh, once he gets his three-point shot, because he shot a lot last season and he shot one for seven in his first preseason game today. Uh, he's a decent shooter. And I think it's good if he can at least hit wide open shots. But I think if anything, he should lean more into his center game uh, than his perimeter game like he's i think he should be a center who's good at dribbling for a center but still a center like he's just not skilled enough to be a jump shooter at any point in his career i think and it just takes so long i think it's just not worth it for him to try to develop that part of the game and to just be the dominant physical force that he already is and can be uh so yeah what i think of this team I could see them being the one seed in the East once again. I just think Giannis is so good and so good during the regular season. There's just not many teams that match up against him well. And he's going to get his 30, 15, and 5. Like, he's just ridiculous. And it's the team, like, I could see him being a one seed. Do I see them making it to the finals out of the East? Now, that's tough because you have teams like Miami who match up well against them and who definitely, I don't know if they got, they didn't get better, but they didn't get worse. You have the... Nets who are coming along, the Sixers who might improve this year, the Celtics. There's just a lot of teams in the East, and I think they're right there with all of them. Like, I don't think any team is, like, oh, better. I wouldn't put any team above them, but I wouldn't say they're above any team either. I just think it's kind of a, it's going to be kind of a mix of who makes it out of this group. Because I really just don't know based on the regular season roster. So it's tough for me to put them in the finals just because there's so many teams but i think they're going to be right there with all the other teams in the east so yeah that's how i feel about the bucks tell me what tell me how you feel uh, in the comment section below do you think Giannis is gonna be great what do you think of the drew holiday trade and yeah i'll see you guys next time bye